2007, and little Samba Koulibaly is on his way to make medical history. He's one of the first children to take part in a trial for a new vaccine against deadly meningitis. Many countries in sub-Saharan Africa have called for this vaccine because of this dreadful and devastating disease, which is called epidemic meningitis, which was devastating their population for over a century now. Over one million cases of meningitis have been reported in Africa since 1988, and thousands of people have died. When an epidemic strikes, people are desperate to be immunized. But the emergency injections do not work on infants and give only temporary protection to adults. What's urgently needed is a vaccine that can eliminate African meningitis once and for all. Seventeen-month-old Samba is one of 600 healthy toddlers taking part in a clinical trial for a new vaccine against African meningitis. Scientists at Mali's Centre for Vaccine Development need to find out if the inoculation is effective and safe. This is a double-blind vaccine trial. The doctor does not know which vaccine the participant is getting and the participant also does not know which vaccine is getting. Uh, they are so far all doing very well. Uh, we have not had uh, observed any particular problem with the vaccine. Samba's mother knows too well about the devastating consequences of meningitis. Her sister died from the disease. <laughs> The new vaccine is desperately needed. Across the border in neighboring Burkina Faso, an epidemic of deadly meningitis has broken out. Six-year-old Jasongo is fighting for his life. Je rentrais hier dans la nuit avec un mauvais état général. Bon, il avait une raideur de la nuque et la fièvre était vraiment trop élevée. J'étais très préoccupé. C'est vraiment moi. C'est comme je, je décrivais son état. Il n'est pas venu avec un état où vraiment qui nous permettait d'avoir l'espoir. He's being treated with life-saving antibiotics, but drugs are in short supply. And even if he recovers, he may have brain damage and deafness. This tiny health center covers 2,000 villages and has just three nurses. La situation elle est quand même un peu préoccupante. Actuellement, le recapitulatif, je peux dire que on est à environ à 200 cas depuis que ça a commencé avec huit décès. Voilà. Donc, on était là avec peut-être deux, trois malades et paf, d'un seul coup, on est là, on peut avoir 60, 50 malades par jour. Donc, vous voyez vraiment, ça a dépassé vraiment nos capacités. The health center can't cope with this huge influx of meningitis cases. Many patients have to stay outside, day and night. Under a tree sits Awa Bedima. She too is suffering. Elle, c'est Bidima Awa. Elle est rentrée hier avec une forte fièvre. 
Elle a dormi ici et ce matin, on constate quand même qu'il y a eu une nette amélioration de son état de santé. Awa is now on antibiotics. But medicine can't treat her greater loss. Seven days ago, she came here with her daughter, Rabiatu. Despite treatment, her condition didn't improve. Then one night, whilst relatives took care of Rabiatu, Awa grabbed some much-needed sleep outside. A meningitis epidemics are dreadful. You only have to go through one, uh, one of them is enough. Uh, people became frightened very quickly. Commerce stops. People stay in their homes, and if they leave their homes, it's usually to bring somebody who has meningitis to a health center, or to visit somebody, or to try to assist someone else who has meningitis. Uh, it, it really is dreadful. For about six to seven months of the epidemic, nothing else happens apart from that epidemic, so it's a major cost to the nation. Each case of meningitis costs about 90 US dollars to the family. And you are talking about a family where that's about three to four months of their disposable family income. So all of a sudden, they lose this money. And then, of course, their debts, the loss of young lives lost. It has a major impact on the economy. <laughs> I remember clearly from meningitis, we used to be sent to a cemetery to stay there the whole day long ways so they can bring bodies. We spend the whole day uh, putting bodies underground. This was during epidemics like meningitis. It was attacking all ages, mainly children and adolescents. So that was a really serious souvenir for me. WHO's infectious disease specialist is charting the latest outbreak. It has worrying implications. The current situation of meningitis in Burkina Faso is a critical this year because, uh, as you can see in this map, all the districts on red have uh, crossed over the epidemic threshold. The government's crisis committee meets to discuss how to tackle the growing epidemic. Over a million vaccines are needed. They decided to explore the way to fill the gap of 1.5 million doses of vaccine. They have not enough money to buy the vaccine and the government is exploring another donor in order to fill the gap for this necessary vaccine on the field as soon as possible. Here in Tenkondo district, much needed injections have arrived. Health workers can at last begin a mass immunization campaign. But while staff work all hours to distribute the vaccines, other health provision suffers. All the activity, care at the hospital and the health facility are stopped because there is not enough staff uh, to take care of all these things. That is a big challenge for the, all the district uh, in Burkina. As the epidemic tightens its grip, panic breaks out as villagers fight for vaccinations. 
Some have waited here since 6 a.m. and the local staff must vaccinate 800 villagers a day. People are very worried. They are afraid that the vaccine is not to finish before they get the vaccination. There is not enough uh, personnel. There are only four people uh, for this team of vaccination. But the polysaccharide meningococcal meningitis vaccine in use here is only partially effective. This vaccine, uh, it's not long lasting. We need to vaccinate every two or three years and that is a very big uh, problem for the community and for the population. The problem with the current polysaccharide vaccines is that the protection is rather short-lived, uh, no more than three years, and the vaccine is not effective in uh, youngsters under two years of age. A third and very important point is that use of the polysaccharide vaccine does not confer what we call community protection. This is an organism that circulates in the community, and the polysaccharide vaccine, while providing individual protection for a vaccinee, does not diminish the general bacterial load within the population. By the end of 2007, meningitis would have killed 4,000 people in Burkina Faso. Two years later in Nigeria, 56,000 people would be infected. The race was on to stop the deadly disease in its tracks. During Africa's worst meningitis epidemic in 1996, 25,000 people died. African leaders called on the World Health Organization to urgently introduce a more effective vaccine. With a $70 million grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Meningitis Vaccine Project was set up. The project was established with a single goal, to eliminate epidemic meningitis as a public health problem in sub-Saharan Africa. And African public health officials emphasized that vaccine cost was the main constraint to the introduction of new vaccines in sub-Saharan Africa. Affordability was one of the key issues. Actually, uh, one of my colleagues recall that the minister told him no vaccine is better than a vaccine that we in Africa cannot afford. If the meningitis vaccine project were to succeed, that is widespread use of this vaccine across this area, the vaccine would have to be priced at less than 50 cents a dose. In the UK, the development of a powerful new vaccine against meningitis C in the 1990s had seen startling results. We started to evaluate the meningococcal C conjugate vaccines. There were a number of studies in young babies, young children, adolescents, uh, looking before and after vaccination. Then in 1999, the UK was the first country to actually introduce these meningococcal C vaccines. In the first decade after introduction, it was deemed the biggest public health intervention of the decade. It's severely reduced group C infections and deaths, um, and basically not eliminated, but drastically reduced the number of cases. The hope was that the same type of vaccine, known as a conjugate, could be used against African meningitis. But even though some work had been carried out on just such a vaccine, Western pharmaceutical companies were not interested in producing it because it wasn't profitable. Conjugate meningococcal vaccines had been tested in Africa by pharmaceutical firms in the mid to early 1990s, but these projects were discontinued because it was felt that the uh, economic potential of continuing uh, th this development was, was, was not something that they wished to continue with. 
Mark LaForce's quest to find a new vaccine intensified after meeting a young man struck down by the disease. Jean-Francois was an 18-year-old uh, from Burkina Faso who was the captain of his football team, president of his class. He was awarded the mathematics medal. Uh, he was clearly a young person of great promise. I met him and his mother in a hospital uh, where he was recovering from his bout of meningitis. And it was clear in speaking with Jean-Francois that he wasn't gonna win any more mathematics medals. And on top of it, he was stone deaf. Deafness is a common result of meningitis. Three quarters of the children at this special school in Ouagadougou have survived the disease. Jean-Francois left hospital and was learning to cope with his disabilities. After he was discharged from the hospital, the family had adjusted. Uh, they developed their own form of sign language. Uh, and he was gradually getting better. So much so that he started to play some soccer. Uh, a little bit of soccer with his brothers and sisters. And he was playing in the front yard. The ball rolled into the street. And he was run over by a truck that he never heard because he was deaf. I remember hearing that on the phone and I started crying uh, because I was so touched and bothered by the fact that this was intensely unfair. With no Western pharmaceutical companies willing to develop a vaccine for African meningitis, Mark LaForce turned to a vaccine manufacturer in India. Serum Institute of India quickly came to our attention when we spoke with individuals at UNICEF and personnel at WHO. Serum Institute of India was a well-known supplier of high-quality products and products in quantity. But the question remained, would Serum Institute take on the project that other companies had deemed uneconomic? Some of the European companies had already done some clinical trials on this particular product, but they were not interested to launch the product because the end user was the African uh, population who were not going to pay them the money that they were expecting out of this research. From Serum Institute of India's standpoint, sure there's risk. Here's somebody who shows up and says, gee, uh, we'd like to work with you, but uh, we're going to stipulate how much you can sell the product for. Well, that's sort of a hard discussion right from the very beginning. Those discussions were not as tough as Mark LaForce had anticipated, as Serum Institute had a different approach to business. We thought that this will fit well into the philanthropic philosophy of Serum Institute to make the vaccines available to the population where they do not have the vaccine manufacturing capabilities and they cannot make it on their own. I was pretty confident that if uh, we as a developing country manufacturer look into this project, we'll be able to do it in a much more economic way as compared to the big pharma. So if you could help them out by making the vaccine here, we were interested. With Serum Institute on board, everything was now in place to begin work. This partnership is unprecedented. For the first time, we had um, a UN organization working with a US-based NGO, WHO and PATH, facilitating the transfer of technology to a company in India, Serum Institute of India, using resources from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, a philanthropist. Bringing all of this together, we got to developing a vaccine at a cost that could be affordable for the poorest countries that needed the vaccine most. The groundbreaking collaboration would result in the weapon needed to fight African meningitis. 
polysaccharide vaccine calls forth the very simple response with the generation of antibody. Uh, this antibody is usually short-lived. However, if one takes the sugar and conjugates it, that is, combines it with a carrier protein, fundamentally changes the immune response that occurs. The vaccine now becomes a different vaccine and engenders a much more powerful immune response. They form a very stable complex or stable antigen. And this antigen, once it is injected, then it gets released very slowly in the body and the response is much stronger. That is an immune response that is characterized with higher antibody levels and also the capacity for memory so that when the immune system sees this particular polysaccharide or this particular sugar again, it mounts a much more vigorous uh, immune response. A year after clinical trials on the new vaccine began, scientists had the evidence that they'd been hoping for. Four weeks after immunization with the conjugate vaccine has led to antibody levels that are 20 times higher than those that one would get from the polysaccharide vaccine. Introduction of this vaccine at large scale will result in a community immunity, uh, so-called herd immunity. This is a huge benefit because not only do vaccinated individuals benefit from this, but even the unvaccinated, because there are fewer organisms in the population, so there are fewer exposures that can occur. The signs were that the new vaccine could eliminate epidemic meningitis in Africa for good. But first, there were obstacles to overcome, including winning over the community. Anything new happens, uh, there are always worries and rumors, and so it's part of, uh, of life that you are worried when something new comes. Getting the vaccine to the people who need it most. C'était toujours notre bête noire, c'est cette conservation de, de vaccins dans un milieu qui fait très chaud. And most importantly, getting governments to back the new vaccine. In addition to all the technical and medical aspects, we need political will. Our job as physicians is to convince decision makers to make this a real success. A dry, dusty wind that every year has brought deadly meningitis to sub-Saharan Africa. But since a new vaccine has been introduced, cases of meningitis have fallen dramatically. Menafrivac is the first vaccine custom made for Africa. Over 200 million people have been immunized in 15 countries. In Bamako, Mali, Samba Koulibaly was one of the first children in Africa to receive the jab as part of a clinical trial. Today, Samba is nearly 10 years old and in good health. The new head of the meningitis vaccine project, which helped develop the vaccine, has come to see him. Samba, Mrs. Samba, your son is a hero of the Ménagite. He is one of the first children in the world who received the vaccine of Vaccine Menafrivac. Yes. Everyone who has passed in the campaign. Youssou, Feta, Feta Malado. Malado. Yes. When there was the great campaign in 2011, they did the queue to get vaccinated. Et ils ont reçu le vaccin Menafrivac aussi, alors. Voilà. voilà. <laughs> For Dr. Preziosi, meeting Samba has brought home how far the project has come. In those days, uh, way back seven years ago, we had absolutely no idea what would be the results. And now, uh, only seven years down the line, we have about more than 200 million people have received a vaccine across the entire meningitis belt. 
and also it was quite important to see the sort of the ripples even in, in his own community because his sisters, his brothers, his friends have all received a vaccine during the campaigns and they have seen no epidemic ever since then. But there's one vulnerable section of the population who've not been able to take part in the mass campaigns. That troubles the scientists leading the research. There is still a huge, considerable milestone missing. Children under one years old. It's very difficult for a father or a mother to say that you have a vaccine that can protect your family members aged between 1 and 29, and that that same vaccine cannot be given to children under one. While if meningitis A came in the society, in the community, it can hit everyone. Everyone can have meningitis. So scientists at the Centre for Vaccine Development in Mali tested 1,500 babies aged between 9 and 12 months with the new vaccine. The latest vaccine trial was given to children for three main reasons. Number one, to see how well those children will be responding to this new Menafrivac vaccine. Number two, to see how safe giving this vaccine to them will be. And number three, how well it will work given uh, concomitantly with the current routine EPI vaccines. Marie-Pierre Preziosi has come to Mali to see the results for herself there has been a major breakthrough. The results look excellent. Uh, the vaccine is extremely safe and very immunogenic, provides very good immune response in babies uh, at the age of nine months. The initial step was really to introduce Menafrivac in mass campaigns among a large age group from age one to age 29 years. And now we need to have a sustainable strategy for the years to come to maintain the population community's protection. And the introduction into the routine programs will ensure the elimination of the disease in the long term. But the scientific team need to wait for formal approval from the World Health Organization before Menafrivac can be introduced into routine childhood vaccinations. Mali has been suffering epidemics of meningitis for over a century. And their health and political leaders uh, really want this new vaccine for their population. They want to protect their population and to sustain elimination of these epidemics. Even with the backing of the government, introducing a new vaccine is not straightforward. At a community meeting in Mali's capital, Bamako, little Samba's mother told of the hostility she faced when she had her son immunized. When anything new happens, uh, there are always worries and rumors, and so it's part of, uh, of life that you are worried when something new comes. However, whenever a rumor occurred, we were able to show, strongly show the evidence that this was unfunded. Overcoming the suspicion of a community was vital to ensure the widespread acceptance of vaccination. Dr. Samba So realized the importance of working with women to allay their concerns. Every time you're talking about introducing a new vaccine, you're talking about training vaccinators, training the field workers, and training families, parents, in, on what is a vaccine, what is the importance of a vaccination. The first children who will be vaccinated will be my own children. So if it's something not safe, I don't know why I would take my own babies to receive this. So these vaccines are absolutely very safe. Keeping religious leaders informed was also essential. They commanded the respect of the community. 
CBD Mali staff they involved imams, they involved uh, village elders, explaining to them the purpose of the, the, the meningitis vaccine project's clinical trials. And uh, it is as a result of the success of these interchanges that allowed the community participation to be as good as it is here. Far from harming or killing people, the vaccines were saving lives. The scientific proof was being gathered at this laboratory in the north of England, the leading lab on meningococcal serology. Here, all 25,000 serum samples from the meningitis vaccine trials have been analysed to see just how effective the vaccine has been. The tests basically showed that before vaccination, the individual serum was not killing the bacteria, but after vaccination, there was very high levels of killing in the serum. And this is really quite crucial to license a vaccine. You need to show high levels of killing in the individual serum. At a launch for the vaccine in Mauritania, street theatre instead of science was used to convince people of the safety and efficacy of modern medicine. The play shows a traditional healer using herbal remedies on a meningitis patient. At last, an ambulance is called and the patient is rushed into hospital in an attempt to save his life. Among those at the launch was the Minister of Health, who travelled all the way from the capital city to attend. His very public support for the vaccination campaign would be instrumental in the programme's success. Elders were also brought into the campaign to share their positive experience that any community can be convinced if properly informed. <laughs> With wide acceptance of the new vaccine, over 200 million people have received Menafrovac in mass vaccination campaigns. Dr. Preziosi has come to Mauritania on the western edge of the meningitis belt to see how health workers will manage to immunize 1.5 million people in just 10 days. Hot desert conditions and remote health centers make the job of distributing vaccines here very tough. <laughs> you have more than 30% of the population who are beyond the 5 kilometers range, which means they do not have access to routine immunization. At this temporary vaccination site, health workers prepare for a busy day. People have walked miles to get here. As of now, they have vaccinated today more than 70 people. People have to walk kilometers in order for them to get vaccinated. With the last major meningitis epidemic in West Africa still fresh in people's memories, people are keen to be protected. 
اللي تدق لي اختي راك تتكلمي تقولي لنا اللي تدق منين سمعتي باخبارها من قالها لك والموجب جيتي واش تعرفي عنها؟ تحسيس بيها وتو تحسيس عن طريق ايش؟ عن طريق تليفون مساج عن طريق تليفون اوكي شي قالت مسجز اون هير سيل فون اوكي اس ام اس اس ام اس اس ام اس تو كم هير توداي تو كم هير توداي ايفن يسترداي But transporting vaccines to these remote outposts is not straightforward. Traditionally, vaccines need to be kept below 8 degrees centigrade, from the point of distribution all the way to the point of delivery, the so-called cold chain. It's a huge challenge in a country like Mauritania, where teams are faced with hundreds of kilometers of rough desert terrain. Yeah, the true, yeah, the sable, yeah, the, yeah, the animal, man. Because the route is a bit difficult, it's a lot of sable. In hot countries like Mauritania, the vaccine only lasts for three hours in a cold box. Kavi, kavi, nice, nice, nice. Vaccination teams have to leave the site several times a day to get new ice packs meaning medical staff are under pressure to get as many people vaccinated as possible. In the developing world, the logistical hurdles of keeping vaccines cold are one of the main reasons that one in five children worldwide miss out on life-saving vaccines. It was always our noire. This is the conservation of the vaccine in a milieu that is very hot and that we don't have enough energy disponible in all the villages, in all the petit coins, where we want to attend each child in his territory to be vaccinated. This is where Manafrovac comes into its own. Scientists at Serum Institute were aware that being a conjugate vaccine, it was far more stable than most other vaccines. Because this is a lyophilized product, when there is no moisture inside, the antigen remains pretty stable. This led to the tantalizing possibility that Menafrovac would not need refrigeration at all times and could be used in a controlled temperature chain, or CTC. Honestly speaking, we did not develop the vaccine taking into account that it will require to be shipped in the controlled temperature chain. When we make a product, we do our stability studies at different temperatures. Okay, so it was already tested for 28 degrees, but in our own interest, we have also tested the vaccine at 40 degrees centigrade. The data was reviewed and this vaccine can actually be used at temperatures of about 40 degrees for up to four days. So that now the WHO guidelines allow us to do that. And you can imagine the impact. Menafrivac is unprecedented on the development model, but also on the deployment. We can take advantage of the known stability of the vaccine and use the vaccine at ambient temperature. And that's, again, unprecedented. You can take the vaccine out of the fridge, put it in a vaccine carrier, and travel long distance where there are no health facilities to reach people who do not normally have access to health facilities. So this is, this is really a revolution in terms of the control temperature chain. It's a huge advantage for health workers in Mauritania who are using the new method for the first time. This indicator is blue. Normally, it will continue to be blue. If it becomes white, it means that the vaccine is not the vaccine that has been given. So, we don't have any problem with the temperature of the temperature. Let's use it. That's it. At the end of each day, each file is marked with a line. This one has been out of the cold chain for three days. It must be used within 24 hours. Health workers have been specially trained to use the controlled temperature chain. We have all the vaccines for the conservation. 
Je crois que pour les gens encadrés, normalement encadrés, nous n'aurons pas une confusion entre les vêtements. Je pense que c'est une démarche très bien. On remercie tous les, tous les collectifs qui ont les Nations Unies, tout le monde, on remercie ça. Et grâce à ça, on aura une base solide sur la santé des populations. By using CTC alongside traditional cold chain delivery, far more of the population can be protected against meningitis. Rosso teams have vaccinated around 40% of their target population, while the other city, comparable to Rosso, they vaccinated only 27% using the, the cold chain method. So this is very important because you win on every aspect, financial aspect, logistical aspect and the human aspect. حالت مشكلة القوة عن المشاكل اللي كان يخسر ياسر من الفاكسين كان يخسر النهاية قال هاي واقعية التغنية الجديدة شبه من الأخرى قررت حالة By the end of the 10-day campaign, 97% of the target population will have received the new vaccine. Whether you are on a motorbike, you are walking, and some of our health workers go by foot for hours before they get to their destination, it means that more people can have access to this life-saving vaccine. When the vaccination team turns up at a clinic, the local community celebrates its arrival. And there's more good news for the team who developed the vaccine. After four years of mass vaccination campaigns, the World Health Organization has given the go-ahead for Manafrovac to be used in routine immunization programs across Africa. The introduction strategy was two-pronged. The first part was to immunize as many people as possible in the shortest time possible to induce community protection and herd immunity. And the introduction into the routine programs will ensure the elimination of the disease in the long term. Mali, where the early research was carried out, will be one of the first countries to introduce it. The PEV de routine covers les enfants de moins d'un an. So it would be good to protect the cohort naissant d'introduire ce vaccin dans le peuple de routine pour que chaque enfant qui naît puisse bénéficier de ce vaccin et être protégé à vie. Women here under the age of 29 have already received Menafrovac during mass vaccination campaigns. When their babies are nine months old, they will receive the injection along with other routine childhood jabs. <laughs> It's very important for all the African countries to go for this vaccine, introduce it into the routine EPI, because meningitis, A, is just African meningitis. And this vaccine has been developed in Africa by Africans. So we have to use it in Africa by Africans. This is a unique story. The fact that this vaccine has been developed for Africa and it is going to address an issue which has caused 
major problems for our continent is an example for the future. MENAFRIVAC could facilitate the development of vaccines tailored for Africa. You know, we have a lot of diseases there that are considered as often no drugs, no vaccines. And uh, building from that, we've seen, for instance, the acceleration of um, processes to produce a vaccine against Ebola. MENAFRIVAC has much promise for the future. Those involved in the project say it's been the achievement of a lifetime. This is something I've never ever seen in my career. I think those of us who have worked on this initiative have been very privileged to be part of this uh, immense success story. Over 200 million of persons have received it and we have seen a major public health effect with complete elimination of the disease in vaccinated areas. I couldn't describe my sense of joy, satisfaction and achievement that a disease which has caused so much devastation in Africa is finally being addressed. I'm starting to see the end of a tunnel. I'm starting to see the sun because I have seen children dying from meningitis in this country not a long time ago. And I know that this vaccine is a very good vaccine. We make it, we did it. Let's celebrate this. Thank you.